Last season, this jacket was my go-to shell. If you couldn't tell, this is the Patagonia Galvanize jacket. Um, it's a hard shell with some soft shell-like elements, like the fabric. Um, but at the end of the day, it still is a hard shell. It has a three-layer uh, construction, so it is very much waterproof. But this season, I kind of transferred away from it. Um, there's some things that I think for the jacket just didn't make sense of use this season, and I'll get into that. Um, for a side note though, this jacket has been discontinued. It's been discontinued since probably 2020 or 2021. Uh, if you're curious on what kind of took its place, that would be the dual aspect. The dual aspect kind of does a lot of the same things, but a little bit differently. So there's that for you. Um, but let's just kind of dive right in. So like I mentioned, this was my go-to piece last season. Um, it's what I wore basically all the time. And I think there's only one other shell that I wore, but I only wore that just like a handful of days. So this was my go-to jacket. And maybe you can kind of see, it's kind of grimy. So it's, yeah, I've used it a lot. Um, and it was a great shell at the time. Um, I really, and it still is a good shell, but there are definitely some things that kind of date the jacket. Um, the biggest one that I could find is that just the weight of the jacket. This jacket is actually really heavy. And, you know, in today's kind of modern materials where we're getting more lighter and stronger materials, this just, it feels like a dated design. It's very heavy um, and that is just due to what the fabric is. This is like a, like a soft, it is more like a soft shell. You know, when you take this arm right here and you can stretch it like a soft shell, but you know you have three layers of, H of the protection with using H2 No. That just all adds bulk. Um, when you go with three layer construction, you're already going to have a little bit more bulk because you have now three layers on top of each other. And then you add the fact that this is also more like a soft shell. That just, it just, it's a recipe for being heavy. And that's kind of what I found. Um, using it like, I've used this jacket just maybe like two or three times this season. And every time I'm like, holy crap, this jacket's pretty heavy. Um, so that kind of steered me away from it. Um, the other thing that it's kind of weird with this jacket that this jacket is a slim fit and it's definitely cut tighter in some places, but overall there's just a bigger bulk to this jacket. Um, that's kind of what I really found this season and that I really didn't like is that whenever you have a harness on, you know, it kind of flares out underneath like right where your hips are and then it flares out right at the arms. It's kind of a weird thing that I noticed, but there's just like an abundance of fabric and that kind of abundance of fabric is due to the features that this has. You know, this jacket has pit zips. It has, it has a lot for what it can offer. And it's pretty indicative that, that everything that was designed with this jacket was climbing orientate, orientated. And it makes sense because this jacket released along the lines of the high alpine kit. So this was very much a alpine climbing jacket and climbing jacket in mind. And, you know, those details are still appreciated. You know, having all these um, buttons and clasps be just big and glove friendly is a super nice feature to have. Um, having these draw cords so you can cinch down your hood from two different ways is really nice to have too. Uh, it does have reinforced cuffs, which is honestly a nice feature. Um, just don't use it with gloves, or with, not with gloves, but with a watch. I found that sometimes when you have those reinforced cuffs with a watch, it gets a little weird on your wrist. So I tend to stay away from that. And you know, you can't see it now, but there's a Rico reflector in the back of the neck. So you still have this modern day thing in construction with this jacket. But I think now after seeing the dual aspect and a couple other things, it definitely makes sense of why they kind of stepped away from this. Now. Does this does that mean that I'm saying that this is a bad jacket? Not at all. This is still a great jacket, um, and if you can find it, it would still probably be worth it to get. It performs at a high level. You know the mobility you get with this is unrivaled. I haven't, I still haven't found a shell that acts completely like this. You know the dual aspect kind of came in as a replacement. But the dual aspect doesn't stretch like this does, and you kind of get more reassurance with like abrasion resistance with this because it is more like a soft shell. So there's a couple of things that still keep this jacket at a higher standard, but you know, there's just a couple of things that you get when 
you're not using modern day construction and modern day materials. So there's a couple of things that I think hold it back. And the biggest one for me this season was the hood. Um, because I switched to the Petzl Sirocco this season for ice climbing, the couple times I've worn this jacket, the hood just does not work well with that helmet. What I found is that every time I put the hood up, it constantly pulled the helmet back and it just, it was frustrating to use. Last season I used the Black Diamond Vision. That helmet has more of a traditional ratchet system in the back, so it stayed in place, whereas the Sirocco doesn't. So yeah, the hood kind of drove me away from this jacket and you know, it's been, it was really great to use it for one season and the couple days I used it to this season, it wasn't bad, but I definitely see why the Patagonia has moved on um, from this kind of design and silhouette to more push for something like the dual aspect. But overall, it still is a great jacket. If you can find it on like worn wear, it's still a great find. It'll perform just as great as a lot of the current hard shells that Patagonia produces and a lot of the other competition out there. And like I said, you do definitely get features that are still more tailored to a climber that you don't really see elsewhere with a lot of jackets. So overall, it is still a great jacket and I would still probably recommend it. I'm kind of in this gray area with this jacket just because I see why they have moved on from it. But that's the galvanized jacket after basically two seasons of use. So. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.